and we're back. Welcome to Anna and the Aardvark. This is my YouTube channel, well, our YouTube channel. Um, we've been away for a while because uh, I went on holiday and then I was a lazy so-and-so and I came back and did absolutely nothing for a week or so. Um, yeah, because you know what it's like when you travel and you're not that brilliantly well and you get really tired. So I gave myself a few days rest and now we are back. If you are returning to the channel, hello again. Here's more strange advice, perhaps. Um, if you're new, you're more than welcome. Um, I hope you like what you what you see and what you hear. If you want to get in touch, there's a box down below. See, said it again. I'm going to stop saying that I said it again. I'm just going to say the down below, and you can laugh or not. Um, I always will. Anyway. Uh, yeah, do stay in touch. Uh, it's really lovely to get your comments and to reach out to other people. So uh, I'm not just a face behind a camera. That's the point. So today it is the third in a three part series about surviving and having a good life if you are housebound. Um, people are housebound for all sorts of reasons, um, you know, whether it be illness or disability or a mental health condition you know whatever it is or maybe you just don't want to see anybody you know and that's perfectly valid um i've done three videos this is the third as i said uh one on the practical side of things you know dealing with your washing and your cooking and you know easy easy hacks to life with that then the second one was about fun things to do when you're at home for a long period of time using the internet and today's video is about having fun without the internet. Now I'm very aware that there are people out there who do not have the internet, do not want to use it and choose not to, or for whatever reason can't use it. Um, now my friend pointed this out to me, thanks Ros, because I didn't think of this. Um, if you're in a house where there is no internet, you are not going to be able to see this video. Um, it kind of is counterintuitive. So what I'm hoping is that your very kind friends and family might watch this video and say, oh, I'll take my phone or my, you know, my phone round to so-and-so's house and I will show them the video. Or maybe they could just write a list of the stuff that I recommend. Either way, if you are stuck at home without the internet, um, it's going to be a lot harder to do things, especially if you need supplies to do those things. So you're going to have to uh, ring, I guess, yes, maybe use a phone directory and ring places to buy supplies over the phone. Or if you have friends and family, you could send them on a shopping trip for you. I will admit, I found this really hard, really hard, because, well, back in the day when I was a kid, uh, there was no internet and it was so easy just to, to get hold of things because everywhere sent paper catalogues and you could just ring them up and say can I have a catalogue it doesn't really happen anymore because it's all online um, and pretty much everything that you want to do requires the internet and it, this has actually shocked me quite a lot at how internet dependent life has become and I I'm not that happy with it really you know I, I feel sorry for the people who can't do the internet for whatever reason um, life must feel very unfair and if that's you I'm really really sorry um, but hopefully there's a few ideas here that you know maybe one or two of them might gel with you so let's get on with the list uh, the first thing is reading 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 if you're at home a lot of the time. Reading is such a joy. Because um, there's so many things you can read. It, you know, you don't have to stick to fiction. There's non-fiction, there's travel writing, there's cookery writing, there's art, you know, there's, there's loads of things. And the other thing is, um, don't always stick to grown-up books, if you're a grown-up that is. Read children's books, children's activity books. They are brilliant, they are so much fun. Um, don't be embarrassed, nobody's going to see you buying it because you're not going to a shop, because you're in your house for long periods of time. 
Um, but yeah, just just buy interesting books that look like fun. Um, writing is another thing. Uh, it, it's very cathartic writing and there are so many different things you can do with writing. Um, obviously, you know, you can write fiction, uh, you can write um, your memoirs, you could write oh, all sorts of things. A, a book about your hobby, whatever your hobby is, like an instruction manual, that sort of thing. And the beauty of writing um, at home is you can do it bit by bit. You don't have to bash it out, you know, in a given time frame. So you can work it around your, your, uh, your needs, as it were. Another idea um, is varying arts and crafts. Again, um, it's very trial and error and it's very much about what you would find fun um, to, to pick the right sort of art or craft hobby that you want to do. Um, don't get caught up in the whole I'm not artistic, you know? It doesn't matter if you're not artistic. If you want to draw, draw. No one's going to see it. You're not in a classroom with other people. You're at home. Your book, you know, your sketchbook, when you finish, you can close it. No one's going to see. So even if you think that drawing stick men is, is crap, draw stick men because they're pretty cool. You can say a lot with a stick man. Um, cooking. Cooking is a funny one because I suppose foodies really enjoy cooking. Some people hate cooking. And if you've got limited energy or mobility, cooking can be quite a struggle. But if you do have the odd day when you think, oh, yeah, I've got enough energy to do something, it might be as small as a microwave mug cake. Doesn't matter. Cooking is good. Cooking is a really good way of forgetting about the pickle that you find yourself in. Um, learning a skill. Now, by a skill, what do I mean by a skill? Um, for me, uh, bookbinding is the thing that I really love doing. Um, you might want to learn a musical instrument. Um, there are so many different ones <laughs> that you can choose from. Um, I remember as a child, I used to play the xylophone in the primary school, school orchestra. And that was amazing fun. Um, so don't limit yourself to, you know, the ukulele or the good old recorder. My God, your neighbours would love you if you played the recorder. <laughs> um, but there are options out there. There are options. Um, courses are a really good way of absorbing time. And quite often you can get written courses um, and you just work on your own at home. Um, you don't really need to use the internet for it if it's a written course. Um, for example, um, I've done um, an art course in children's literature, uh, um, illustrating children's literature, a blah, 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 literature. Um, <laughs> and it came in, in a file. In fact, I'll show you. I will show you. So I'm not going to show you the actual college that it was was in but in this folder as you can see there are exercises to do and things to look at and that was all in a binder i didn't have to go online i didn't have to go to go to college or anything just all in a binder it might take a little bit of time finding those things because I would imagine you probably need to get your friends to look at things for you on the internet. Um, but they are out there. That This is my point. Um, even though, you know, the world is on the internet, there are parts of it, pardon me, that still aren't. Um, oh, I'm really breathless today. I'm getting too excited about talking and I'm talking too fast. Um, I think, I, yeah, I mentioned activity books. Um, they sound a bit childish, but who cares? Who cares? Um, I like things called doing books. I call them doing books. And it might be like a, a mindfulness journaling book, for example, or draw 101 things and it's got a prompt on every page. 
those sorts of books are really really good for for just you know doing stuff doing something puzzle books as well you can get some amazing puzzle books these days you really can um i i have one which is it's like a an escape room type book if you don't know about escape rooms um you well before covid you could pay somebody to be locked in a room and then you have to solve all the puzzles in the room to make a word to type in to get out of the room um absolutely fabulous concept but you can do it as a book now um so each page is a puzzle you don't really even get instructions it's just a puzzle that you have to figure out and then you collect the clues as you go along and then right at the very end um you input your answer your final answer oh you input it into a computer shit that's not going to work is it okay so you do the you do the book and then you give your answer to your friend and they'll check it um that's pants that's really pants actually um yeah I, I it's hard isn't it it is really hard and i think i'm only just beginning to really get a grip on how hard it can be i'm relying on the fact that you've got friends and family um and, and i i hope that's enough um yeah i feel really bad about this tv tv's good uh if you are in bed a lot um i would recommend getting a tv in your bedroom i didn't for a long time and i didn't and i didn't and i didn't and i really hated it that i had to get up and go and sit on the sofa or, or lie on the sofa because it's not as relaxing as being in bed um so i did actually step out of my comfort zone and get a telly in the bedroom it's a smart telly which means that i get netflix on it i get various other channels on it um it it you know it does the job um things like sewing and knitting and crochet um for some people these will be a joy for some people they'll be a nightmare um i have a really bad problem with all three of those things because i am very ambidextrous and i get so muddled up about which handed side i'm going to use so am i knitting right handed or am i knitting left handed I get so confused it's horrible um and i'm not very good at any of it listening to music is a good one um because there's so many different sorts of music uh depending on what your energy levels are like um there are some days where i have to listen to very very chilled music because my sensory overload is it <laughs> off the planet um and then there are other days where i need really really loud nasty Doof, 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 dance music um so fiddle around with the radio um and and see what you like um and also talk radio you know there, there's talk radio which is also very very good um what else can i suggest puzzles puzzles uh jigsaw puzzles i mean i think i spoke about these in another video where you get um you can buy a huge opening type surface thing that you can do your puzzle on and then you close the sides up and it holds it all in place so you can store it away um that's um yeah that's quite a good idea um phoning a friend um i said this in another video as well don't forget that you've got friends you might feel that they forget you a bit but that's not the case it's not that they've forgotten you but they're living life at 90 miles an hour and you're living it at maybe four um and it's very easy for us to worry that our friends aren't getting in touch but actually they're just you know they're surviving in crazy world out there um so just just keep in touch with them you you make the effort um and and you will be rewarded for that the other thing this is this is the last bit of of advice really that i can give is if you are spending a lot of time in bed or perhaps in a wheelchair um get i call it an over the bed table and it is literally i i've shown it in another video it, it's a table surface and it's got legs that have got wheels on them and it goes over the top of my bed which means that 
I can do pretty much anything while I'm in bed because I've got this surface that goes all the way over it. Now, I am very lucky. I only use a single bed because there's only me. Um, and so the table fits over that. If you're using a double bed, you can get other, uh, I suppose, yeah, they're, they're tables. Um, I, I don't even know what you'd, what, what you'd think, you know, like what they would be called, but um, maybe nursing tables or something like that. Um, but if you can get the number of a disability shop near you, they'll be able to maybe send you a catalogue actually, which would be really good so you could see them. Um, or maybe get a friend to go down to a mobility shop and get some photos of, of something like that. But it really does make a difference um, because otherwise either your bed becomes uh, a complete mess of stuff and it's not relaxing anymore or you have stuff on surfaces and it's really tiring or it's really painful to be reaching all the way over there to pick something up you know if it's right there in front of you it's perfect absolutely perfect if you're eating your dinner off one of these tables in bed wear a bib now not a baby bib what i do i i get a tea towel the long the long way down tuck the top bit in and then put the other, you know, the, the other end, tuck it under your plate and pull the table right up because you will spill food down you. you you're not going to escape that. <laughs> if you do, then you're incredibly, incredibly coordinated because I have to have a surface to eat off. I can't, I can't eat anywhere except really at a table. So there we are, That those are, are my offerings for today. I hope they're not too lame. Um, yeah, I I still can't get over how, how unfair all of that m must seem. But then reframing it in another way, maybe you don't see it as unfair. Maybe you're really, really um, encouraged by the fact that you don't use the internet and therefore you are more creative and more inventive. Um, and if you are, then uh, hats off to you you know that that is really really good um and if you can think of anything that i've missed um that you think other people should hear about uh let me know that you know in that box down there um just type it in let me know um and then i can maybe make a second video um of better ideas from the horse's mouth from people that know what it's like um i think i think that's probably would probably be a better video than my effort. Um, so before we finish, guess whose dad it is? Mr. Ardwark, don't you just love his wonky smile? <laughs> anyway, um, Ardwark's magic, magic? Yeah, magic fact, um, was sent in by a, uh, by a father, my dad, um, anyway, we, we were talking on holiday about what the next uh, aardvark fact of the week would be. And my dad said, did you know that in the past, back in the olden days, people used to wear wooden false teeth? I didn't know that. He did. I didn't. And now Mr Aardvark is telling you they used to use wood for false teeth. Anyway, moving swiftly on. We're back in the saddle. Um, I will endeavour to do uh, more regular videos again now that I'm back from holiday and um, yeah have yourself a really really lovely week keep warm because it's flipping cold out there um, and take care and we will see you next time bye